Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this liquid text effect in Adobe Photoshop. And just quickly before we get into the tutorial, I just want to mention that this isn't necessarily the only way to create this effect, this is just how I learned. So with all that being said, let's just get into the tutorial. Okay, so first things first, you're going to need a document to work in. So I'm just going to set one up here, I come into File, New. And I'm just going to have it as 4000 by 4000 and then the resolution is going to be 300 dpi with the colour mode set to RGB colour. I'm just going to hit OK to create the document. And now that we have the document set up, we're going to need some type to work with. So I'm just going to hit T to get the t uh, type tool. I'm just going to write liquid since we're going to be creating a liquid effect. And the font that we're using is actually my own font that I created called Monoline Script. And there'll be a link to that in the description in case any of you are interested in using it. So I'm just going to center this quickly and just drag that there. And now what we're going to do is change the color of the type. So with the, type, with the text tool, we're just going to highlight the whole type, come up to the little color box at the top here. I'm just going to hit 535353, which gives you sort of a dark to medium sort of grey. So what I'm also going to do is, after every step, I'm going to duplicate the layer just so that we can always go back to previous steps. But of course, you don't have to do this if you're following the tutorial. It's just so that if I need to go back to show you something, I can always do that. So I'm just going to hit Command J or Control J if you're on PC to duplicate. And I'm just going to turn off the original one. And then I'm going to right click on the layer and then come down to Rasterize Layer. So now that that's rasterized, we can come up to where it says layers, channels, and paths here. You're just gonna come over to channels, and then you're just gonna select the blue one at the bottom, and then right click and duplicate channel. Just hit OK when it comes up, and then you're just gonna turn the duplicate on, and then turn off the original blue. So now you're left with just this. And what we're now gonna do is come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just gonna put that at 25% or 25 pixels, I mean, and just hit OK on that. And now we're going to turn this off, sorry, no, we're going to turn all of these back on first, then turn that off. And then we can come back to our Layers tab. And now we can start to give it that um, liquidy sort of look. So from here, I'm just going to duplicate. Of course, you don't have to do this part. You don't have to keep duplicating, but I am. So I'm just going to duplicate that, so we've always got the original. And from here, we're going to come up to Filter, Render, and then Lighting Effects. And once this opens, you'll see that it now looks like this. But yours will look like this straight away um, wait for it to load so yours should look like this and the reason mine had a texture on it then is because I've actually done this before so as you can see it's set to spotlight in the lighting effects properties over on the right and then where it says texture down here this this will be set to none by default so all you're gonna do is click on that and then you'll see that the blue copy that we made before will be there so once you click that it's basically using that blur that blurred version as a texture over the top of this so it just kind of gives it a rougher look and it now allows you to give you that sort of 3D effect, whereas when it was a flat color, it didn't, it was just completely flat. So these are the settings that I've got here. So intensity is at 40, hotspot 76, um, exposure minus 20, gloss 100, metallic 100, ambience 86, and height is 19. Now, of course, these values won't be the same for everybody. If you're using a different font, for example, then the values will probably be a little bit different. And of course, if you're using a different size document too, so I'm just going to slightly adjust these, I don't want to adjust them too much, and you don't want the whole type to be too bright either. So I'm just going to bring down the hotspot a little bit, and I'm also going to bring down the intensity of the colour. And I think I'm going to take the height of this up just a little bit, so the texture just comes through a little bit more. So 22, and then the ambience, I think I'm going to bring this up. Yeah, 93 that looks okay. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks at this point. So I'm just going to hit OK at the top here. So now you can see we have the type with the lighting effects applied. So what we're going to do from here is now come up to Filter and then Filter Gallery. And by default, all of these will probably, probably be closed. So you want to open the Sketch folder and then there'll be a filter called Chrome. So if you select Chrome, and I've just got my detail and smoothness both set to the top. Now, of course, as I said before, depending on the size of your type and the size of your document, then these uh, settings may vary. But I'm just going to keep these both at the top because I'm quite happy with how this looks. So I'm just going to hit OK again on that. And now we have the Chrome applied. And I actually forgot to duplicate it before we did that, so I'm just going to quickly undo that, duplicate it, turn it off, and then come back up to Filter, Filter Gallery, and reapply that. Right, so that's reapplied on a new layer, and now we can duplicate this one, so we've always got the backup. 
And the next thing we need to do is lighten it up and darken some of the areas as well. So to do this, we're gonna come up to image, adjustment, levels. And the very right slider, we're just gonna bring this all the way up nearly to the middle. And then the middle slider, we're just gonna drag this down a little bit so we can retain some of those shadows. We don't wanna get rid of them all completely. So you want it to kind of look like this. So it kind of looks like a chrome, a piece of chrome. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And again, I'm just gonna duplicate and then turn that one off. And then the next step to just give it that little tiny extra bit of a liquid kind of feel, we're gonna add a bevel and emboss to it. So you're gonna come down to, with your layer selected, come down to the little effects button at the bottom, hit that and then come up to bevel and emboss. And once this opens, you're gonna make sure you've got your style as in a bevel, tech, your technique is smooth. And then again, the settings may vary depending on the document size and the type size that you use and the font. So these are the settings that I've got here because I've used this before and these worked very well. So if I just turn this off, you you might be able to see this. Let me just zoom in a tad. Right, so now if I turn that off, you can see the difference it makes. It just gives it that extra little glow in certain areas here. So it just makes it look more like an actual liquid. So I'm happy with how that looks. So I'll just go through the rest of these settings. You can adjust the angle if you want, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks as it is. The altitude, you can adjust that too. And then the gloss contour, I've got mine set to ring, which is the second one across and then second down. So it's this one here. And then what I've got with these shadows, I've actually put that all the way down to zero because you don't necessarily need that. I mean, you can have it. In fact, I will bring this up a tiny bit, to be honest. So let's see. We don't want it to be too strong. So I'm just literally gonna have it at about 10%. And then the highlights, you want that to be fairly high so you can actually see the um, highlights that you've added. So I'm happy with how this looks and I'm just gonna hit okay. And again, I'm just gonna duplicate that. So the last thing that we're actually gonna do to the type to give it that more of a liquid look is we're gonna come up to filter and then liquify. And the tool that you wanna be using here is called the bloat tool, which is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth tool down. It's just like a little oval shape with arrows on every side. Or you can just press B. And then the settings that I'm using with this, the brush tool options, the size is 150, density is 50, and the rate is 80. And again, if you're using bigger type or smaller type or different document size, and these sizes will also vary. So ideally what you're looking to do with the liquify tool is make the ends of the letters where the actual, like where they end like this, where I'm hovering over. So you wanna make these look bigger because it's obviously like gonna be like a water droplet. And then obviously because of gravity, water would uh, congregate more at the bottom of the letter so you want to really bulge these bottom areas out and kind of give it a little bit of a drip at the bottom as well so it actually looks like a liquid like you know dripping down something um and then also where the letter intercepts itself and joins another letter these parts would be quite uh, bulged out as well because that's also where water would congregate so i'm just going to quickly go around the letter l and show you how i'm doing this and then i'll just speed up the rest of the video where i'm going through the rest of it because once you've seen me do one letter it's pretty straightforward so i'm just going to click and hold here bulge that bit up quite a bit i'm just going to click and drag around and then this middle bit here where it intercepts itself i'm just going to click and hold for a little bit longer and then just move to each of the corners and click and hold and it'll just bulge those areas out a little bit more and then i'm just going to carry on following it round like so and of course you don't have to just do one like route around it you could just keep going around it and adjusting different parts so make that a little bit bigger just bulge that bit up a little bit and then there's another intersection here so i'm gonna make this bit bigger by just clicking in all the corners and the middle so pretty happy with that and then i'm gonna come around and now we're at the bottom of the letter so now we want to have a bit of a bulge at the bottom here where the um where the water would be dripping from so I'm just gonna keep clicking to get a nice shape. So I'm quite happy with how that looks like that. Right, so I'm happy with that. And now I'm just gonna do this other part of the L. And again, this is at the bottom of the letter. So there'd be another bulge down here where it's ready to drip. So let me just get all this right. And then there's another connection where it connects to the eye. But I think at this point you should uh, have a fairly good idea of what you're doing. So I'll let you just continue from here while I speed this part up. Okay, so once you're happy with how the liquify looks, once you've done all this, you can just simply hit OK. And that will now apply it to this. And obviously because we duplicated the layer first, we can see the difference between the new one and the old one if I just turn on the bottom layer. So that's how it looked before, and this is now how it looks. So you can see this does actually look a lot more like a liquid, and this one kind of just looks like a chrome sort of pipe, maybe. 
just because it's so sharp on the edges and it doesn't look realistic as a, as a liquid because obviously a liquid's not um, straight. So this just this gives it just helps give it that more of a liquidy kind of feel. So I'm just gonna turn this one back off and bring this one back down to the center. And I'm just gonna duplicate. Oops, wrong key. I'm just gonna duplicate that and turn off the background layer. And what we're now going to do is we need to take out the highlights and some of the shadows as well, so we can actually so it actually looks like a liquid rather than a full solid shape. So to do that, I'm just going to change the background first. So I'm just going to click on the background layer and make sure you have your background color set as black or a dark gray. So I've got mine as 151515, which is a dark gray that I always use. So I'm just hit OK on that and then holding Command or Control if you're on PC, just hitting Backspace and you'll see that it now applies that color to your background layer. So we're going to come back up to the type layer up here and all you're going to do is double click on the thumbnail of the layer, which will open up the layer style panel. And down here where it says blend if, you're going to get the right hand side slider and you're going to start dragging this over to the left. And you see that that now gets rid of the white. And you can see how this little arrow that I'm dragging has a bit of a split in the middle of it. And what you can do is if you hold alt and click on one of the sides, you can actually adjust that, that, that side of the slider. So you can see how it's, everything's very rough and sharp there. If I split this, oops, let me just click and you'll see that it actually smoothens everything out for you. Just So it just looks a bit tidier and a bit nicer. And I'm also gonna drag the, the slider from the opposite side as well to get some of the darker colors out. So just keep dragging it and dragging it until you start to see some difference. So there you can start to see some of the other colors going. And again, I'm just gonna split this one holding Alt. So I, want, I don't want these, like these gray parts here. You don't want them to be completely filled in. So doing this you can see that it starts to make it a little bit more translucent as I pull it across and that's what you want to go for so I think I'm quite happy with how that looks there maybe drag it a tad more and I'm just gonna hit OK on that so as you can see it's now starting to look more like an actual liquid so we'll just compare it to the version beforehand so I'm just drag this down so this is what we were working with and this is what we've now been left with so you can see that this looks far better than this in terms of um, a liquid kind of effect so we can just undo that, put it, turn that off. And now we can start looking at different blend modes to really make this look like it's sat on a surface. So I'm gonna change the background color from black to an actual color so we can actually see what we're doing. So I'm just gonna put it as like a fairly like light sky blue sort of color. And if you wanna set your foreground color here as the background, instead of holding command and then backspace, I think it's alt and then backspace and that will apply your foreground color to the layer. So we've done that. And again, I'm just going to duplicate this so we've got a backup. So we'll come up to blend mode and we're going to go with screen. And that just makes it white and makes it feel like it's more part of the composition. Whereas when it's on normal, it, it, you can see it just sticks out because the colors aren't right. So if you go to screen and then we're going to duplicate this layer. So holding command and then J or control J on PC, that just duplicates it for you. And you could leave it like that if you wanted the liquid sort of effect to stand out a bit more. So if I turned off one of the layers, you can see it kind of fades out a little bit. But if you duplicate it, it just stands out that a little extra bit more. So I'm quite happy with how this looks with um, two of them. So I think what I'm going to do is, because we've got two of them and the bevel and emboss is still um, accessible, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just double click and open the bevel and emboss. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down of this. So I don't want it to be all the way off. We just don't want the full effect of it. So just hit OK on that. So I'm happy with how that looks. And now the last thing is to add a bit of color behind the actual type itself because it just looks like it's kind of floating. So it kind of needs a bit of a shadowing sort of look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on one of the originals. So where's the one that we liquefied? That one. So I'm just going to drag this to the top so we can see what we're doing on this layer. And I'm just going to hold Command or Control if you're on PC and click on the thumbnail of this one that we've just moved to the top. So now it's all selected. And as we did before, with the background layer set to black or dark grey, I'm just going to hit Command Backspace and it'll fill in now this selected area. So now I'm just going to hit Command D or Control D on PC to deselect. I'm going to untick the bevel and emboss because we don't need that on this layer. And then what we're then going to do is we're going to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm just going to set this to 25% and as I said before, depending on the size of your document and whatnot, then, then these values will vary. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. And I'm going to drag it below both of the layers and I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply and I'm also going to drop the opacity right down as well because you don't want it to stand out too much you just want to have it that little bit of a shadow behind it so now if I turn this layer off so I've dropped the opacity down to 26% as well 
and I'm just going to turn this off and you can see the difference it makes it just looks more realistic it actually looks like it's sat on that background so I'm just going to turn it down just a little bit more we don't need it to be too strong so I'm happy with how all of this is now looking um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of the type layers that we have at the top and I'm going to duplicate them using command J or control J on PC and I'm just going to merge these layers together and then I'm going to turn off the original two that we just had and now we're left with this and then we're just going to come up to the blend mode and then we're going to come down to where it says divide and hit that and then we're just going to turn on the the one layer below it because we did actually duplicate it, so we have two here that are both the exact same layer but they've both got screen blend mode so it just makes it a little bit brighter but because we have this new one now um, which just gives it a little bit more color we're only going to use one of these screens because if we use both of them you see it gets a little bit too bright so we're just going to go with how this is now and what I'm actually going to do as well, I'm going to come back to the bevel and emboss that I was using and what I've noticed here is you can see it kind of looks dark there and it kind of takes away that feel so I'm just going to turn the opacity of the black all the way down and now you can see it's more of a shiny sort of look which is ideal so I'm just going to hit OK on that and I think now we're done with this, I think it looks quite cool um, the reason we had the divide at the top of this one the reason we do that is because if I turn this off you can see it's very, I'm turn this one back on, you can see it's very white, everything looks very white and there's not much colour coming through, I mean, although it is kind of a colour, it's not necessarily all that colour, you can't really see much of it, but if I turn one of these off and then turn the top layer back on, you can see it just starts to add little bits of colour here and there, so from, what, from here what you could actually do is, you don't have to adjust any of the type anymore, if you wanted to change the colour of this, all you have to do is get your background, so I'm just going to hit Command J on the background, so we have a copy of it, and I'm going to hit Command U or Control U on PC to bring up Hue and Saturation. And now we can just play with this slider and you'll see that when I change the background, because we set the shadow that we added underneath, because we set that to multiply, that now changes with the background. And because of the blend modes that we have on the actual type itself, these pick up colours from the background and apply it to this. So no matter what background you have it on now, it will always um, retain the colours within the liquid. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. That's how I created this liquid effect in Photoshop. So as always, if you use this tutorial for anything and post anything on social media, feel free to tag me in it because I always love to see what you guys come up with uh, using the tutorials that I put out. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take it easy.